A new poll conducted by ABC News and The Washington Post has some not-so-great news for Joe Biden. So even though overall he's polling ahead of Donald Trump, albeit marginally, the enthusiasm deficit that he's had throughout the Democratic primary hasn't gotten any better. Now, when you look at levels of enthusiasm in the general election, well, 85% of Trump supporters overall are either very or somewhat enthusiastic, while 73% of Biden supporters are very or somewhat enthusiastic. Translation, Trump supporters are far more enthusiastic than Joe Biden supporters overall. Now, when you look at those who are very enthusiastic, 53% of Donald Trump supporters are very enthusiastic, while only 24% of Joe Biden supporters are very enthusiastic. That is a 29-point difference. 29 points. That's a lot. Now, enthusiasm doesn't necessarily translate into votes, and there are a lot of external factors that can currently influence the outcome of the 2020 election in November. Currently, you know, we don't we don't know how this COVID-19 pandemic is going to play out. We don't know how this will impact the economy and how much of a blame Donald Trump will take, at least how much voters will blame him for this and how he handles it. We we just don't know. So, there's a lot of external factors, but currently as it stands now, this poll is very bad news for Joe Biden, because what does this indicate to us? If there's a lack of enthusiasm in a general election, turnout is low. Now, riddle me this. When turnout is low, who's more likely to benefit from that? Democrats or Republicans? Republicans. Because the same loyal Republicans who vote every two years are going to come out again and loyally support Donald Trump. But Democrats win when they get out the vote, when they register new voters and expand the base, attract independents, go after non-voters. But if you have a nominee at the top of your ticket who's not able to do that, that is a very bad sign. That's an indicator of what's to come. Another four years of Donald Trump. Now, ABC News puts these numbers into context for us. Perhaps the Democrats' biggest risk is under the surface, in Trump's big advantage in backers who are very enthusiastic about supporting him. Strong enthusiasm for a candidate can help boost turnout on Election Day, a must-have particularly for Democrats, who rely more on motivating less frequent voters to come to the polls. There's deja vu in these results. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton found herself in largely the same position four years ago. She, too, had a slim lead among Democrats for the nomination and ran essentially evenly with Trump among registered voters. And she lagged in enthusiasm with a low of 32 percent, very enthusiastic, in September 2016. Biden is eight points under that mark now. Bad as Biden's enthusiasm score is, we've seen worse. As few as 17% of former Republican presidential nominee and Arizona Senator John McCain supporters were very enthusiastic about his candidacy in 2008, and former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney saw 23% in 2012. The poor omen for Biden is that Clinton, McCain, and Romney all lost. And the fact that Joe Biden is eight points behind where Hillary Clinton was... And she lost to Donald Trump? Biden's probably going to lose. I'm just going to say that. Biden is probably going to lose. That's not a foregone conclusion. But if you nominate Joe Biden, you get Donald Trump for another four years. Now, if Joe Biden loses, uh, the left will be blamed. They'll say that, you know, not enough Bernie Sanders supporters fell in line and supported the nominee. But we've been telling you since last year, the beginning of last year, that Joe Biden is not electable. And what did they say? Oh, well, you have to vote for Joe Biden because he's the most electable. Jill Biden, Joe Biden's wife said, look, I know that you don't like my husband's shitty healthcare policy. I'm paraphrasing. But you should probably just suck it up and vote for him anyway because he's the one who's most electable. Now, this all sounds eerily familiar to what was said back in 2016. We were told that Hillary Clinton was the most electable. So they used the exact same playbook and Democratic voters fell for it again. Because guess what? They agree with Bernie on the policies in every single state that voted. 
a majority of voters agree with Bernie Sanders. A majority of voters want Medicare for all, but they're voting strategically for the person who they think is best positioned to defeat Donald Trump. And, you know, part of this is the media brainwashing them, constantly getting them to think that if they want to beat Donald Trump, which is basically their number one goal, they have to go for Joe Biden. So maybe you don't like Joe Biden, but I mean, do you really want to beat Donald Trump or do you not? If you want to beat Trump, you've got to go for Joe Biden. And now we're in a position where there is so little enthusiasm for Joe Biden that there's even less enthusiasm for him than there was for Hillary Clinton. And any candidate who has very little enthusiasm ends up losing, Republican or Democrat, but especially Democrat, who again relies on turnout to win. What a goddamn disaster. And Democrats have nobody to thank but themselves for constantly trying to push home this point that Biden is the most electable. Biden did it too, but I mean, the media didn't have to fall in line. The media didn't have to do that. But here we are again. It's so incredibly frustrating. And, you know, the counterpoint will be, well, if, you know, way more people are enthusiastic about Bernie Sanders, then why isn't he winning? And I hear you. But we all live in a bubble. All of us who, you know, are very in tuned to what's going on in the Democratic Party primary, we are the exception, not the rule. So most people pay attention to presidential races and the general, not the primaries. So in the event Bernie Sanders were the nominee, I think his chances of winning would be better. I'm not going to say Bernie is, you know, a sure bet because nobody is. Donald Trump is more powerful now than he was back in 2016 because he has that advantage of incumbency. And he's running on a strong economy, which persuades voters more often than not, even if that economy isn't benefiting everyone. So, like, this combination is terrible. Joe Biden is weaker than Hillary Clinton, and he's going up against a stronger Donald Trump. Put two and two together. He's gonna lose. If he wins, it'd be a miracle, basically. So, another four years of Donald Trump, I don't have to tell you... What a disaster that will be. Donald Trump will almost certainly name at least one more Supreme Court pick. But I'm honestly more concerned about the uh, judges that he will appoint to lower courts, the federal judges. He's been very effective at doing that. Uh, I'm terrified at four more years of undoing what little progress we've made when it comes to climate change. Undoing the Affordable Care Act. Like, it'd be a disaster. But this is a disaster that Democrats have to own if it in fact happens, right? I'm rooting against Trump. I'm not rooting for Biden because he alone is a disaster, but I'm certainly not rooting for Trump and I hope he loses. I hope Biden is able to beat him if he's the nominee, even if I'm not going to support him. But Democrats got to own this. This is what they did. They made their bed. Now they've got to lie in it. Obama, you've got to own this, bud. Sorry. You, you know, hid behind the curtain here and you got everyone to consolidate, drop out, support Joe Biden. You wanted this. You moved heaven and earth to make sure that Biden beats Bernie. So own it. This is your disaster. You've made your bed lay in it. Democrats got to own this. They can't blame anyone but themselves. They knew that, you know, running a moderate who was unlikable didn't work in 2016. So to think that it would work in 2020, it's just stupidity. So they've got to own this. This is their making, their disaster in the making, more specifically, They've got to live with it. They can't blame us. This is their doing.